I told you guys I would be coming back on to do a follow-up episode for the National Geographic Channel's docu-series Narco Wars, Season 3, Episode 3, The Mob and the Mohadeen, which I associate produced, and which features former Bonanno, crime family associate Frank Fiordolino, as well as a handful of fresh sources that we brought onto the series. Frank is going to be coming on in a little bit to do the follow-up with me, but before we jump into that, I wanted to answer a couple emails that I got where I guess there was some confusion from people plugging mine and Frank's name into a search engine and trying to uh, find the episode that way, and it was bringing up Season 2's Episode 1, The Heroine Dawn, which Frank and I also worked on. Um, but I would say the best way to access a specific episode uh, to alleviate any confusion is if you have Hulu, is to pull up the series through Hulu. You can select a specific season, and as you click on the season that you're looking for, it will open up an episode guide, and then you can make your preference from there. Uh, that would probably be the simplest, uh, least confusing way to access the series or a specific episode within the series. Uh, I also got an email question from one of you who asked why we brought Frank back on to season three when he was already on season two. So as most of you know, I work in film and television for a living. I've worked on several network docu-series and documentaries prior to uh, being brought on to the National Geographic project. And you are right. It is a general rule of thumb that once you use a source within a docu-series, as the series goes forward, you generally want to bring in fresh sources, fresh faces. The team for Narco Wars, uh, our series specifically, our production team, when they contacted me to ask me about a source that I could bring in for this season, once they told me what the subject was about, which was Gaetano Badalamenti, I knew from all the sources I had or had contacts for that um, Frank really was the best source to present back to them. Frank is from Castellamare del Golfo. His family originates from there. And Gaetano Badalamenti's wife, is from Castellamare del Golfo. Frank's mother personally knew Badalamenti's wife, and Frank had gotten direct stories from people over the years that uh, knew people either directly or indirectly connected to the Pizza Connection. So really, for a source of secondhand information, Frank was the best source to offer back to them and once they did their preliminary interview with Frank whatever reservations they had initially to bring him back onto the series that was basically negated I, I don't know if that answers your question but that's why and again Frank was a source in episode one of season two and episode three from this season like I said was essentially a, uh, a continuation with uh, the pizza connection being formulated. So without further ado, I am going to bring Frank on, and uh, he and I are going to do the follow-up. I have Frankie Fiordolino on with me, who was featured actually quite prominently in uh, this episode three of this season, Narco Wars. So we're going to talk a little bit about the episode and just kind of do a quick follow-up. How you doing, Frankie? Okay, basically, um, what you think of this one compared to the last one? Well, 
the two episodes actually intertwine with each other. I mean, this is basically like a follow-up in a way from the Galante episode that we did last season. So my opinion, I think that this episode was a lot more um, large scale. It covered things from a lot more angles, it kind of showing like broadly uh, everything that was going on. Uh, obviously, with the the heroin being manufactured for distribution in Afghanistan and it taken into that angle, you know, and, and you and I have talked about this, that, you know, it definitely could have been laid out, you know, in, in more detail in certain parts. But we were limited on that because, you know, it was all confined to a one hour storyboard for the network so plus commercial absolutely so 40 to 45 minutes approximately of airtime technically right. so well, on an international level yes uh, you're correct this one was more wide or broader the um, the um the episode was it covered the uh the, the war that was going on in afghanistan against the russians in 1979 it was um also the CIA involvement with with, with with that war, and it also brought to attention the heroin trade, the Sicilian heroin trade, here to the United States at the time. Absolutely. It was all-encompassing of, you know, the politics behind what pushed the Afghans to essentially figuring out, like, hey, this is a commodity that grows in our environment very well that they can produce i mean in a way their country was mostly economically devastated from you know the years of war with the russians and obviously internal conflicts with the various tribes within afghanistan so you know in a way it turned afghanistan into you know the world's really first true narco state where it was all encompassing of the government you know their economics it's very interesting but it's part of the story yes yes you know. uh, the candlestein angle you know of the cia allowing drugs to be smuggled out of afghanistan and returned for uh, for arms that the, the afghanis were buying with that drug money and, uh, and and funding that war because drugs, as we know, especially heroin, is a very lucrative business, and that's where they were at the time, you know. And 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 uh, the Afghanis came out, or well, the Mujahideen, everybody involved in that war came out victorious. And right. even up to today, the Russians call that their Vietnam. Right. You know, for people to understand with that, at the point that the Afghans were have in conflict with the Russians was still during the Cold War between the United States and, and the Soviet Union. So obviously the United States was pushing and supporting the Afghans and their fight against the Russians. It, you know, and, and like you pointed out, it was their Vietnam. Right. It was the very one of the very last wars that the Russians fought where they didn't give a fuck about it anymore. They didn't have that um, Russian patriotism and in the early, um, after after World War Two, after they won in World War Two, So everything was diminishing. It was 12 years before the Berlin Wall, but at the same time, Russia, uh, communist sentiment, even among its people, after that war dwindled. But back to the heroin the heroin side of it and uh, getting the drugs there, it, it, it takes the mafia part of this uh, documentary focuses on Dadano Badalamente, who uh, had to learn real quick how to be the biggest drug dealer in, in the world at that time because of what was going on in Sicily and a war that he was losing in his own country against uh, Torriena. And now, Frankie, just real quick... You know, obviously, we're limited of what could be laid out in the episode. So for my subscribers who are listening, you are from the same... Your family originates from the same area that Badalamenti's family originated, which is Castellamari del Golfo. Not Badalamenti himself, but his wife. Her name was Vitali, And um, she and my mother grew up together. And she would come see him later on when he was... Uh, incarcerated in the United States and she would come see my mom and stay with us for a little bit. 
actually went to go see uh, her husband. Not only that, I have had uncles that were part of that uh, that mob there between Alcamo and Castello Amado del Golfo. That was aligned with Padre Lamente for years. Mm-hmm. I have family. I have family who died in that uh, horrible uh, period era of time of that, that war, that second uh, mafia war. So that was my connection as far as that. And in the story and part, part of you, you know, people are like, well, we, well, that's not about it. And well, it's not, but this was part of my family. And even even on the the, uh, the second series, the first episode, I ran down with uh, Carmine Galanti. I, I was nine, obviously, but there was a lot of people there that I were, were like family or who were family involved either in the hit right. or who died. Uh, during that hit, and um, over the years, you get bits and pieces, and, and and eventually, I become part of something in that in that life, and it right. all comes together. You know, it'll be pieced together where you guys will be like, okay, now I get it. Obviously, for those listening, I mean, Frank's family going back historically, not talking about anything, you know, now, but historically, Frank's family. Uh, was very integrated in, in multiple facets, you know, whether being involved or just being around big players. And um, obviously, we talked about that in some of our previous interviews. Yeah, and, and it's like when you see these documentaries, uh, the ones based on, I don't know, anything, from the Muslims to Mormons to the Manson family, you know, you're going to get people that were involved or, 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 or were around it at that, at that point or, or to some aspect as far as that. Yes, I did grow up in a very cult-like kind of environment with my family. And um, I'm not going to say it was as uh, gory or gruesome. So we did differentiate. I said that before. Right. You know, uh, it was always crime on crime. It wasn't like anything like these... Uh, polygamist or even when I mentioned the Manson family who were just uh, outright animals but um death hippies yeah yeah you know and um but this was just me being around and and getting that kind of angle aspect that a lot of people won't or can't give you uh it's not it's from perspectives of of a lot of the perspectives you have ex-CIA in this in this one uh, absolutely right you have uh, ex-FBI, you even have an ex-Attorney General of the United States, and um, Edwin Meese. Right, who gives, uh, in the commentary. series. So, um, it's great work with them, and it was a lot of fun, too. Would I rather not be in the situation I am today? Yeah, of course, but it is. It is what it is. Right. And that's where we're at. But, um, yeah, it was fun. We flew in, we flew in and um, to D.C. for this one. So um, we we caught a uh, football game, and I got COVID too while I was there. So where where the hell did you catch COVID from? Yeah, well, forty thousand people. It was a Cowboys. I know I shouldn't have went. I hate the Cowboys. Cowboy Redskin game. Because I know I remember uh, we got you set up in a pretty nice hotel. Right, that was in D.C. We were in Georgetown. It was fun. So obviously, the last episode, the last show that we did last season. In season two, we gave it a grade. What what would you grade this hour episode, episode three? I, it's not fair. You can't critique your own. Um, it's you, tough. You, know, you, you can, but yeah, it, it's very tough. You, I, you I, have to be I, honest. I liked it a lot. I loved it. I, I, and, and I'm, t- I'm, I'm looking at it as uh, the work these guys put, put into it. Absolutely. I mean, the production of it was done phenomenally. Right. You I know, to my own. It's just, I, I liked it a lot. Um, I'll give it a nine and a half. How about that? That's good. I mean, but, but let's let your, uh, your com- you know, the people in the comments uh, decide. I want to plug a friend of mine's uh, movie that uh, he just put out. It's a, it, it's a, it's a forty-five minute movie. It's called Sick Minded. Um, Produces Jeff Hallett, and there's cameos. But I get this now: Mike Dowd and um, Johnny A. Light, the director who put it together. Lavar, he's really good, and. Uh, I see. I read it. I was I was fortunate enough. I enjoyed it a lot. Let me know what you guys think about it. It's called Sick Minded. Is that going to be a streamed thing, or is it going to be released on a video? I don't know the particulars. It's not my project, but I do believe it is going to be a stream. Obviously, yes. And um, 
the other thing is that 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 it, it, it's uh, about human trafficking. It's not uh, anything to do with the mob. It's uh, true crime. Uh, I don't. Well, it's fiction based on true crime, you know. Right. And, and it was doing really well. I liked it a lot. It was good. Okay. And, very um, cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to to see it again. Yeah, check it out, guys. Tell me what you think about that one too. So you guys look out for that. Sick minded. Um, and also, obviously, the Narco Wars Season 3 is wrapped, but you can still catch that and stream it on Hulu. So for those of you that have missed uh, either the entire series, which ran approximately six weeks, or missed uh, our Episode 3, if you're on Hulu, you can stream that at any time. And you can also stream Nat Geo through other streaming platforms. I don't have a list in front of me. But you can obviously Google that and see what streaming platforms do offer Nat Geo. Um, potentially uh, whatever you're using to stream with might have Nat Geo on it. So make sure you check out the Narco War series. Uh, specifically Season 3 is what Frank and I are touching on today. Uh, on our Episode 3 that we worked on. So uh, definitely make sure you check that out. And again, let us know in the comments what you guys thought about it. And uh, give us feedback. We'd appreciate it. All right, Frank. I appreciate you coming on. Gotcha, gotcha. Good stuff. All right, Mike. See ya.